Oh. Fuck, man. These Sunday pay-per-views are too goddamn long. So the, so it's 12.02 Monday morning. Mm-hmm. Right the after final... Forbidden Door has just finished. Yeah, somebody slammed that bitch shut. Um, yes, it's over. So the buy-in started at 7. There were five, four matches on the buy-in. The only one... Over. What? The only one worth mentioning in this whole review is Athena defeated Billy Starks to advance in the Owen Hart Female Cup tournament to the semifinals. And what a wild fucking outside move that was, where mm-hmm. Billy hit misses the senton on the outside, and then Athena just dogged that knee into the table. Was vicious as fuck. Crazy. Well, well welcome to our new series, All Tuckered Out. Because Sunday pay-per-views are too goddamn long. We're going to try to recap this whole show in about 10 minutes for you. Dolly said this shit went on forever. It went on for fucking 13 matches across a pre-show and a main card. It's too much. Too much. I get there was a lot of good wrestling on this card, but there was too much. We're just going to go right to the main card with MJF defeating Tanahashi using the dynamite diamond ring in a very, very good opening match to the card. Yeah. It's we're tired. This is all going to be off the cuff. Here's the best part. I have watched this entire thing through tick through like TikToks and Twitter stuff because I was unable to sit down and watch the show uh, due to technical difficulties, but I'm here. I watched the whole show even when I was at work This match was a damn fun match. Good way to introduce Tanahashi again to a North American audience. And a really, really good opponent for MJF in his match. Oh, so it's Tanahashi and MJF. Like, It was a fantastic match. Great way to kick off the card. Which then we go right into the Owen Hart Cup tournament first round match between CM Punk and Kojima. And CM Punk was 100% the heel in Canada tonight. Canada is not punk country. No, there was a few punk fans in the audience, but just like Collision on Saturday, Punk was being booed relentlessly, played the heel, was hitting lariats while screaming into the camera, Kojima, Kojima. But CM Punk pick up the victory here in an okay match. It was pretty fun. It was a good punk match. We move in right now to what it was a sprint of a fatal four way between Zack Sabre Jr., Orange Cassidy, who, uh, Shibata, and Daniel Garcia. Can you tell me, was there some moment where Garcia was doing this and just kept getting fucking hit? Yeah, there was. Well, he was doing fucking. Th- we'll talk about this on Thursday, but why? <laughs> Yeah, I mean that we knew that spot was coming, but Orange Cassidy has officially tied Jade Cargill with the most title defenses in AEW history. Hell yeah, go OC. OC defending that belt weekly on TV has made that title more important than the TNT Championship at this point. By far, which is a joke. Orange Cassidy got the victory here. We move on next to your IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match between Shibata and Jack Perry. There were a fun good, uh, a fun you mean few Sonata. Good, Sonata, I'm sorry, you're Sonata okay. and Jack Perry. I'm so tired. You're all tuckered out. I'm all tuckered out, man. I got my burrito blanket on, but it was a fine match. It kind of ended unexpectedly when Sonata hit the moon salt, and the ref counted three, but then the ref put his hands underneath Jack's shoulders to make sure that that actually was the three. So it kind of looked like that wasn't supposed to be the finish, but it was. The match didn't really mean anything because after the match, Hook came out to help out Jack Perry, got him up to his feet, got him up to the ramp, lifted his arm up. Jack Perry repaired him, repaid him by hitting him with a vicious lariat on the apron. As he got onto his knees and soaked in all the booze, he picked up the FTW championship, held it up, and then threw it down on Hook as he walked off. And this is when Taz left the commentary table for the evening, being replaced by Tony Schiavone. The commentary team throughout the night 
was Excalibur and Kevin Kelly as well. It was it. Uh, I've heard very. I've heard snippets, and it sounded very nice. Yeah the the main picture here was the aftermath. The title match really didn't mean much, and like I said, it kind of ended out of nowhere, and it felt like it could have gone another few minutes. But fun fun thing here. There's a little bit to be said as well. I would like to give Kevin Kelly some credit on this. Kevin Kelly and Jim Ross used to be part of the uh, English broadcast of the New Japan matches. Mm -hmm. So this is throwing it back a little bit to Kevin Kelly's New Japan days. Yeah. Which, like I said, Kevin Kelly and Excalibur, they're phenomenal. Tony Schiavone was great and Taz was great. This dynamite We all do why Tony Schiavone was out there. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because it's Sting. Mm Mm-hmm. The next, we got the 10-man tag team match between the Elite and the BCC. This was a big bunch of shenanigans. It Did was you a, expect any different? Nope. It was a 10-man tag. It went the distance. There were spots gal- spots galore. The Bucks super kicking everyone. Tomoro Ishii hitting a brain buster from the top rope. That was spectacular. And it's, it's the genuine, it's the spot fest match of the night. But it really wasn't the spot fest match of the night because that came two matches later. The Elite got the win when Ishii pinned Yuta after a brain buster. Also pointing out, uh, Eddie Kingston sacrificed himself to take the super kick from the Bucks to push Moxley out of the way. That's probably going to play in shit later. Next, we moved on to... Unfortunately, it was Tony Storm and Willow Nightingale. In this match, it- this is how this is how little this match meant to anything. Because I didn't even see a tweet about it. No, man, it was it was thrown on to be the female match on the card. In my opinion, what I think it is, this match was meant to be Mercedes Monet versus Jade Cargill. They've and all the- but said that. Mm-hmm. And this was just, you know, Willow Nightingale, she's had so many opportunities at the AEW Women's Championship and the TBS Championship at this point to where I think she just kind of needs a break from challenging for it. I understand they just wanted to do a champion versus champion thing, but I mean, Guila said she was going to be there tonight. And I felt like that would have been a much better match for yeah, if Julia. If Julia was there, yeah, that would have been great. Mm-hmm. we we'll move on to next will osprey versus kenny omega which in my opinion is the greatest professional wrestling match to ever happen on canadian soil God, i know hard. i know bret hart is fucking rolling right he, now he can fuck you can, goldberg but this match genuinely i don't i can't say it surpassed the wrestle kingdom match i think they're on par with one another but the only down thing i have here is that Don Callis was ejected from ringside and eventually at some point he came back out and the ref did nothing to eject Don Callis again. There are so many spots in this match. This is going to be talked about for a very, very long time. It could very well be the best singles match in AEW history. I hate Will Ospreay. I hate how good he is. This match was spectacular. It had the best kick out at one I have ever seen. When, uh, what was it? The win- Ken- when Will hit Kenny the had, one Kenny wing. had him up for the one wing, one wing, and then Will stabbed him in the face with a screwdriver again. Picked him up, hit him with the one wing angel, and Kenny Omega kicked out at one, fucking one. There wasn't a fucking ass in a seat in that fucking building. That's going to go down as one of the greatest professional wrestling matches of all time. Oh, which man. which was weird to me because they came out at 10 o'clock. Like, that match started at 10. And I was like, they're doing this match now? I thought this was the co-main. How many more matches? We- We've only got three. It's because it went, what, 35 minutes almost? Yeah, so, the lo- so like that's when I sat back and went, the pre-show 
is what is dragging down these pay-per-views. Yeah, start the pay-per-view at 7. Fuck the pre-show. Yes. No start offense, the... but run, run a half an hour pre-show. You want to do the buy-in or zero hour or whatever the fuck you want to call it at this point? Run it at 6.30, put one or two matches on there, have a very good video package of what else is going to go down in the show, and then get the main card started at 7, especially on an East Coast pay-per-view. On a Sunday night when people like us got to be up for work at 6 in the morning. I, I, would, feel I this, would have loved to have been doing this show an hour ago. I feel this match would... I feel like this pay-per-view would have been greatly benefited if you eliminated the pre-show altogether. You eliminated Willow Nightingale and Tony Storm. And you replaced the Willow Nightingale and Tony Storm match with the Billy Starks and Athena match. I feel good. like... I feel like that would have done this pay-per-view wonders, but I can't say enough about Will Ospreay and Kenny Omega. Will Ospreay got the win here. I don't feel like going over this whole match because I'm tired, and you should go out of your way to check this match out. Will Ospreay, Kenny Omega, I can't wait to see when they do the third one. And in my opinion, this should have main evented. Next. We move into the standard Sting six-man tag team match of the night. God, I love Sting in a six-man tag. Where Sting, Darby Allen, and Naito took on Lesuki's gods of Chris Jericho, Sammy Guevara, and Minoru Suzuki. This was a fun six-man tag team match. It was fun as fuck to watch Darby Allen bullet uh, Minoru Suzuki on the outside. It was good to see like the pop that Jericho and Sting got for being in the ring for the first time ever together that was historic i don't like jericho that's well known but that was i don't know how that is the first time that just man it's crazy because if you think about it their time in wcw didn't really cross over that much in regards to because jericho was a baby face and sting was a baby face at the time and then jericho left in 99 and yeah, that's just, it's wild. It's weird to think that all this time, like in the 30 years that those two have been in the wrestling industry together, this is the first time that they've ever been in the ring together. But Spooky Dads with Attitudes got the win with a roll-up victory over Minoru Suzuki, which I thought, like I said, this was a nice palate cleanser match after what was the insanity that was Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay. That match went 40 fucking minutes. And it didn't feel like it. That match could have gone the full 60 and I would have, wouldn't have felt it. You could have done a Broadway with those two tonight. I, I digress. We said 10 minutes. All right. And then we move on to your main event, which was Brian Danielson versus Okada. And what was a very, very hard hitting affair. Both men. I think I was sitting here in the chat with you. And I counted at one point, I was like, they've done 22 uppercuts consecutively right now. (laughs) It reminds me of the Lonely Island song. I hit him with a sucker punch left, and then a sucker punch right, and then a sucker punch left, and then 22 consecutive sucker punch rights. Like, that's what I was listening to in my head when you were talking about it. Yeah, I was just sitting here going, oh boy, another uppercut. Oh, joy. And it's just like, it was uppercuts galore. But Danielson took a tombstone to the outside. Okada took some of the most vicious knees I've ever seen. Like, this match lived up to the hype. I believe, I think this match would have, I think this whole card would have been better if you would have traded Will Ospreay and Kenny Omega for Danielson and Okada. That's just my opinion. Danielson got the surprising submission win. When he had, essentially, the only way I can describe it was a figure four leg lock on Okada's arms. He had an arm bar with one using his foot and the other arm was trapped under his leg for the label. And he had his arms under hooked on his knee when he was pushing on. It was sick. Phenomenal job from both men involved. I want to give a shout out real quick back to the last match. Uh, mm-hmm. Naito's entrance gear is always fire as fuck. Anyway, so good. back to Okada and Danielson spectacular i didn't get the the rainmaker whip into a busaiko knee that i wanted but that's okay it leaves me wanting more these two are gonna have a rematch down the line it's gotta happen right i can totally see that being wrestle kingdom fuck 
a solid, solid show tonight. I would rate this one like an A minus, a B plus, one of those two. I feel like if you would have done the little changes, this would have been a solid A show and a definite contender for show of the year. It might even still be just because it has Will Ospreay and Kenny Omega. I guess we'll have to see what happens at All In. We've got All In. We've got Money in the Bank coming up. There's a lot of shit coming up, and we're tired. We got a lot coming to you this week if you're watching it when we upload it in the morning. Um, go follow us on Instagram. We'll be announcing it all. Grim Reality is going to be got an interview. Show. We got an interview dropping this week. We have a preview show. We have the regular Thursday show. It's not a regular Thursday show. It well, is... we have a, a Thursday show. You know what I mean? Thursday show starting at six, so you can watch us play AEW Fight for a while. All right, man. That's gonna do it from us. If it's your first time here, drop a comment, drop a like, drop a follow, subscribe. You know all that good shit. We're I'm gonna let funny. Judy go tuck me in. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go. You can sign us off, okay? I'm gonna do my thing here. What the fuck is this guy? He's telling me to sign him. Okay, well, we love you, Judy. Remember, kids, don't listen to Hulk Hogan. <laughs>